So there's going to be five simple steps to raising mealworms. Hello and welcome to Wholesome Roots. Today I'm going to talk to you about Mealworms 101. Mealworms are an easy to grow, high protein treat for many different types of animals. We raise them for our chicken, quail, and other poultry. Some people use them for their lizards or other reptiles. So first off, you need to know the life cycle of the mealworm. So the egg will hatch out into a teeny tiny little worm, or otherwise known as larva. That worm will grow and shed its skin and grow some more and shed its skin multiple times in this portion of its legs. Then when it reaches a full size, it will turn into a pupa. In this stage, a lot of transformation takes place. It's kind of like the chrysalis of a butterfly. Once the transformation is complete inside of the pupa and that larva has turned into a beetle internally, it will shed its exoskeleton again one more time and turn into a beetle. This beetle will then continue the life cycle by breeding and laying more eggs. Lots of different people who raise mealworms keep them in separate containers. They'll keep the larva in one, the pupa in another, and the beetle in the other. The reason why they do this is because some people find it easier that way because it's easier to harvest the worms when they're at full size. And some people are concerned that the beetles will eat some of the larva. But I have found that it's a much simpler way to keep all three stages of the life cycle together. As long as it's managed well and you harvest your worms and don't allow the beetles to become too high in numbers, you'll be fine. And the nice thing is, is my chickens actually will eat the beetles too. So when my beetle numbers become too high, I will harvest some of them and feed them to the chickens as well. So there's gonna be five simple steps to raising mealworms. One, you want a container. We use this old fish tank just because it's what we have. We like to use things around the homestead that are things that we already have. It also can just be a Rubbermaid tote. This I like because I can see through it easily and check on the colony without removing any lids or anything. So I do keep a screen lid on top. Once I have the colony established in the tank, I do want to protect it from anything getting in so make sure that your container is clean and sanitized. We sanitize with vinegar, wipe it clean, make sure it's super dry before you add any of the bedding or the mealworm. Then you're gonna wanna add a food source. <laughs> we have this food source right here. It's bedding and food, and it's just wheat bran. So something I like to think about as a analogy for the mealworm feeding and bedding is soil layers. So I do this as my foundation layer. It's at the bottom and I pour it in and then I add my mulch. I put oatmeal over the top. Then I add slices of potatoes. So the food, bran cereal is fine, oatmeal is fine. I've even had to feed them layer pellets or quail food when I was in a pinch and it worked great. We add slices of carrots, potatoes, apples, but you have to make sure that you keep an eye on these slices that they don't get moldy or you will have to definitely remove them. Another thing to keep in mind that is extremely important with your feed that you give the mealworm colony is that if you get wheat bran or oatmeal from anywhere no matter what the source you will want to put it into your freezer for 48 hours before you feed it to them to kill any active mites or moths mites and moths are quite commonly found in these food products that are sold in the store for people so it is a good idea to make sure that you freeze off any of those pests that might be already in these containers so other pests that you want to look out for is going to be any kind of crawling critters that might get in here. I've had spiders take over and sometimes that's good because it keeps anything else out. But I have found beetles in the spider webs in the past. So I try to keep those pests out of my tank. 
Now a lid with a wire top is not going to completely keep them out, so you will have to keep an eye out for it. And you will want to provide a top for your colony because you don't want any other critters or rodents getting in there and trying to eat your colony. Getting a great healthy colony is our third step of success and making sure that you start out with some really nice mealworms. Now some people will sell you the all three stages but that is not necessary and if you have a friend who lives nearby that is raising mealworms they are very likely to provide you with all three stages no problem if you just ask when you purchase a container of mealworms online they are going to arrive in the mail here's ours oh yeah they definitely arrived alive give you a little snack Fresh out of the mailbox. I want to make sure that they have enough hydration. Give them a little slice of potato. I'll leave a link down below to the Amazon purchase that this was made from. So if you just have the larva stage, they are going to continue on their journey and pupate. Those pupa will turn into beetles and the life cycle will be remade for you. So it's been a couple of weeks since we received our order and we already have all three stages. When they arrived, they came in this small container with holes on top. I poured them into this container so that I could give them more food and room to begin their process of growing. As you can see, we already have plenty of pupa and the beetles are in here too. I have a couple of them that have pupated out into beetles. So don't feel like you have to spend the extra money on all three stages when you can just get the larva and have great success as well. When handling your mealworm and their colony, once they're getting established, there's gonna be a lot of feces in this material and it's gonna be very dusty. So you will wanna use gloves and a mask if you're sensitive. So step number four is monitor your colony. You're going to want to constantly check those potatoes and apples for any sign of mold and remove it right away, along with any bedding that becomes moldy from touching it. You're going to want to watch and see if your ratio of beetles becomes too high and they do start to consume larvae. That is something that you will have to address. You can remove the beetles and feed those to chickens. If you have chickens that will eat the beetles, that works out really well for me or you can freeze them in your freezer for a humane way of disposing of them. You'll also want to be watching out for any signs of pests. The most common pests with these guys is going to be grain mites, which are itty bitty tiny creatures that you can hardly see, but you'll know when they're there because they will start crawling up the side of the container. Trust me, I know from experience. And then the next biggest pest that you're going to see in there is going to be pantry moths and that is something that you don't want getting in your pantry stores so you definitely want to keep on top of it you'll see little moths flying so then it comes to our fifth and final step and that is harvesting your mealworms one of my favorite methods is to feed them so they love the potatoes apples and carrots even though their primary food is their cereal or oatmeal at the bottom they do really love their potatoes, carrots, and apples, and will probably be located right underneath that potato when you go to pick it up. So what I'll do is I'll remove all the potato and apple slices out of the container for a day or two, and then I will add them in on the day that I'm planning on harvesting some mealworm, and I'll put them in in the morning, and that afternoon when I pick up the potato, I find a whole colony of crawling little wormies ready for harvest. So I just knock those into a separate container and voila, I can feed them to the chickens, the quail, and any of our other poultry. This is a low cost, high protein way to supplement your animal's feed. We love watching them grow and transform and my kids have made this one of their favorite projects. They love to feed them the apple slices, they love to harvest them, they love to feed them to the chickens. So it's a great project for a homesteading family to get this colony started and start having a 
more affordable supplement for your chicken treats. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.